morning in Church of the Licks. My hair is pulled back. I got my face on. Church is about to go down. But I'm still wearing shorts and flip-flops, so we're still online. But I hear it's not for long. Speaking of online church, if you are new to Church of the Lakes, we would like for you to text hello to the number on your screen. If you're not new to Church of the Lakes, you know very well that there are buttons up here somewhere. Connect buttons, sermon note buttons, giving buttons, and a life step button. That's for the uh, classes after church. They're fabulous, check that out. If you would like to pray with a live person, there is a live chat button or live prayer button located over here somewhere. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, all of those buttons are located below. Lakes Kids students, I sent your parents the link to Children's Church on Saturday. So ask your parents to get you to Children's Church as soon as Pastor Mike starts teaching. You don't want to miss this week's amazing Children's Church. We're getting close to not having to do this online anymore, so you don't want to miss these last couple of episodes because the small group leaders are hilarious. Next song. Dun, dun, dun. Parents and kids ministry team members, you have a very important Zoom meeting this Wednesday, the 20th, 6 p.m. We're going to be discussing all those really important things. So parents of students and team members of Lakes Kids Ministry, we need you all to show up to this Zoom meeting. See you then. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, Church of the Lakes, it's time for worship. Are you ready? Don't worry, Mr. Marcus will be back. Jesus loves me, this I know. to have you joining us for virtual worship. Stand up right where you are this morning and give God his glory. All creation's waiting, waiting. All of heaven is longing for the day. We'll be laying down our every crown in the presence of the King. All creation's waiting, waiting. All of heaven is longing for the day. In the presence of the King And this is the beginning of a never-ending Anthem will be singing higher and higher again This is the beginning of a never-ending Anthem will be singing Oh, 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 oh. presence of the king and this is the beginning of a new 
with us as we um, talk about the goodness of God.
able to worship you. Thank you for allowing us to be able to feel your presence. You are such a good, good God. God, as you bring Pastor Mike to the stage to, to give us the message today, God, I just pray that you would just speak through him so that we can take the words that he teaches to us and we'll be able to, to live those out to, for our day-to-day -day lives. Again, Father, we love you and we thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, good morning, Church of the Lakes. So this is a few weeks now that we've been doing this virtual worship thing. So you know what to do. Take out your phone, text a friend, give a wave on Facebook, throw out big high fives to everybody, call your neighbor, whatever you feel like you need to do to get in touch with someone that is a part of Church of the Lakes or even someone who's not a part of a Church of the Lakes and invite them to be part of our family. So let's get ready for the word.
church, I am uh, really excited. I've got a great announcement because, you know, from the very beginning of our church, we've said we're all about relationships, right? We are all about relationship, relationship with God, relationship with others. Been a little bit tough to do relationship like this, right? With, with a bunch of uh, empty chairs. So I'm excited because I get to tell you May 31st, we're going to fill the chairs. May 31st, we are back to live worship together and so excited about that. So many of you responded back to our member survey that we did. Thank you for that. Gave us a really good idea of where you were and maybe even some of the concerns that you have. So like one of the things that I think is a great idea is this section over here is gonna be our senior adult, legacy adult, active adult, a lot of different names we have for our older folks, but whatever you wanna call that, this section here is gonna be a place where if they feel like isolating a little bit, uh, because that is our most vulnerable population in this virus, then we'll do that. And over the next two weeks, we're gonna roll out a, a bunch of information to you to help you know exactly what that Sunday's will look like. We've got all kinds of amazing changes. Cannot wait for you to see our new e-guide. Um, I'll just let that one float. You can see what that is when it comes. But we're really, really excited. May 31st, it's a fifth Sunday family worship, which means we're going to all worship together. No kids ministry on that particular day. So it gives us a chance to come back the first time, not necessarily doing kids ministry. But we will do kids ministry the next week on June 7th. So this Wednesday night, parents and team members of Lakes Kids, get on Zoom with Jen and I. And this Wednesday night, we want to tell you everything that we're doing. Uh, my wife has done a phenomenal job. Talked to the CDC, talked to the Department of Children and Families, medical professionals, daycare providers, to make sure that we were doing anything and everything that was appropriate for us to fit guidelines and to keep our kids and our families safe. So join us Wednesday night, 6 p.m. on Zoom. You'll get information on that. But I uh, just want to say to everybody, man, I'm so excited to put some heinies in these chairs, right? May 31st, we'll see you at church. Hopefully you've got your Bibles or some notes, something to write with, uh, lipstick, eyeliner, whatever you need. Uh, grab something to write with. Let's jump into Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, thoroughly have enjoyed this study, man, and I, ho I hope you have as well. Ephesians is just rich with doctrine and theology, but then also just practical. And that's kind of what we've, we've sort of turned the tide and gotten into. If you remember, um, or if it's your first time with us, We've been studying, and Ephesians has six chapters split into two different sections. And the first three chapters is really kind of like the, the doctrine is kind of the deep stuff. And we talked about the, the reality of, of our need and our sin um, and the state of depravity is the, is the big theological word um, that, that talks about our need for God. And then it was chapter two that are probably the two greatest words in the Bible, and that was but God. Um, and the reality is, is even though we're in that state and we have a need for him, God in his love and compassion, right? Sent Jesus, his only son that to die for us and to be that. And so then cha chapter three, we talked about praying so that prayers. And, and so because of all of this, and then there was the big shift that happened last week because the last half is much more practical. It's more real life. It's okay. Now, based on what we've learned here in who God is and, and our relationship to him, now, how do we live? And so there's that big word that began um, chapter four, and the word is therefore, right? And we said last week, anytime there's a, a therefore, you should be asking, what is it there for? And what it usually does, it's going to connect. It's going to connect sets of ideas on this side to the sets on, on, on the other side. And, 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 and we got into chapter four, we started talking about relationships last week, and God was talking about um, the way we speak and our words, how amazing is it that the first place he would go after he talks about doctrine and all this, and now he's going to talk about how do you live day to day, the first place he would go is to your mouth, <laughs> right? It's, and, and, and I mean, how many of us know uh, we have a hard time like controlling our tongues, right? And controlling our mouths sometimes. But um, 
I want to continue the idea of this concept of therefore, because as we read through chapter five, what you're going to see is a whole bunch of therefores. And uh, matter of fact, let me go ahead and jump into it and you'll get an idea of exactly what I'm talking about. Ephesians chapter five, starting in verse one, therefore, right? Be imitators of God, imitators of God. In other words, our job is to try to be like Jesus. Okay, Jesus was God here walking around on earth. And so our job is to see what did Jesus do? And then we're to do that. We're his followers. We're imitators of God. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. And let me remind you what the therefore is there for. The, the reality being that it, 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 they want you to remember everything that we've talked about before. They want you to remember you were adopted, you were chosen, you were redeemed. They want you to remember that you bring nothing to the party. You have a, you're a sinner with no hope but God, right? And so what, what Ephesians is trying to do is to get us to a place where we are realizing that the Christian walk or the Christian life it's a therefore life. That's what, that's, what I've, that's what I've titled today's lesson is it's a therefore life. In other words, the way that you're going to do, and we're going to talk about all these things to do and not do in just a minute. The way you're going to do these things, the way you're going to live out the life that God's called us to, is to remember the therefore. Is to remember and constantly remind ourselves of where we used to be. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Let me keep reading in verse 2. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But fornication, which that's kind of a word we don't really use that much anymore, but that would be sexual immorality. And the biblical definition of sexual immorality is any kind of sexual activity outside of a man and a woman in marriage. That, that's, that would be a biblical definition. But fornication and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as it is fitting among the saints. Let there be no filthiness or silly talk, nor levity. In other words, be careful about your words. They're, they're, they're really crucial, which are not fitting, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no, this is a tough verse. Be sure of this, no fornicator or impure man or one who is covetous, that's an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Boy, that's a, that's a really harsh and a really strong statement that we have to kind of consider. And I think one of the things that's really important for us to hear, um, in our current culture, we have gotten away from what old school would be called hellfire and brimstone, you know? Years and years ago, there was a guy named Jonathan Edwards, and he taught a sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And he described hell, and he described what it would be like. Well, he did such a vivid job of it that literally they said that people in that church that morning were, were crawling the walls. They were like there was a visualization to them of trying to get away from what this is. And I think sometimes we miss that a little bit. We, we like our comfort. We like a good bless me message. But if we're going to live a therefore life, we've got to remember why we do the things we do. And the reason is, is because God has saved us from, from eternal damnation. God has but God because he has adopted and chosen. And so it's so important for us to, to, to wrestle with and to grapple with the, the wrath side of, of the nature of the relationship that we have, because we either can have life with him or we can have wrath from him. But what's amazing about our God is that he actually gives us that choice that you and I have that choice that we can choose to make him Lord of our life and serve him and, and receive that as a free gift or not. But it goes on and it says, let no one deceive you with empty words. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Check out verse 7. Starts with the word again. Therefore, do not associate with them. For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Hey guys, don't hang out with, with people who are doing sinful things. Don't hang out with darkness, right? For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. 
and try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is a shame even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Here's the word again, verse 14. Therefore, it is said, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Verse 15, and I want you, if, you, if you're in your Bible and you want to underline or highlight something, it would be this part right here. Look carefully then how you walk. We're going we're gonna to come back to that in just a second. Look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of time because the days are evil. Now, when you go back, and, and, and for some of you, you realize that the Bible was not written in English, so this is translation. Sometimes we've got to go back to the original language, which this is Greek. We've got to go back to the original language to grasp, you know, a little bit of an understanding. And when it's saying unwise here, it's not talking about dumb. It's not saying you're dumb. Um, it's, it's saying someone who is unwise doesn't pay attention to what's going on. They're, they're, they're kind of clueless to it. As a matter of fact, that look careful then how you walk, that word careful in a lot of translations, it says walk circumspectly. Now that's definitely not a word that we use anymore in English. Uh, but the idea is, is in circumspectly. The, the original, the Greek word is akrobos. And akrobos means this, to live accurately, diligently, precisely, and strictly. So the, the concept of what we're, he's saying to us here is that you got to pay attention. And all I can think of is I think of um, for so many years, I was a youth pastor. For so many years, I've had kids in our house and especially teenagers. Uh, we've, we've done a lot with teenagers and, and uh, how many sermons I've taught to teenagers in youth group. And one of the things that we always talk about, they laugh about, their parents laugh about is that moment when a parent goes to a, a kid and goes, what were you thinking? And what do they say? I don't know. Like, like that's, you know, and you know what? They weren't, they weren't like they, they cannot process for you. Uh, they cannot say, well, I thought this. And then I thought that, which led me to do thus. I mean, they, that's not right. It's, it's, and this is the type of living that the scripture's talking about here is that we just don't think that we're not precise, that we're not diligent in looking at. And the reason we do this is because we've forgotten the therefore. We don't continually renew our mind. This is why we get up and read our Bible, because we've got to renew our mind. Renew our mind to what? Renew our mind to who Jesus is, to our relationship with him, to what he's done for me. Like, I have to renew my mind to that over and over, so that then, therefore, I will live the way that he desires for me to live. And it's not just a chore. Let me keep going. Verse 17. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Again, it's, 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 it's a thought. It's, it's, being, um, it's, it's working at our belief and our faith and our relationship with Jesus. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, right? Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart. Always and for everything giving thanks to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the God and the Father, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. That last line, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ, is a really, really important kind of a, a, an ending there because what it says to us is, you know, there's all kind of arguments and we're about to hit it. The very next verse, ladies, is your favorite verse, right? Is the whole wives submit to your husbands. But before the Bible says that, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Before the Bible says that, it says everybody submit to each other. Like we're, we're to walk humbly with each other. So I made a list. Um, I made a list of what the Bible says here. What are the do nots and what are the do's, right, in, the, in this whole deal? So here, here kind of are the do nots. Do not uh, have, be involved with sexual immorality or fornication. Do not covet. Do not say inappropriate words, 
right? Um, do not associate with sinful behavior. Do not take part in works of darkness. Do not get drunk. OK, so we read that list and we go, OK, I got the list. I understand that. OK, then what does God want me to do? Well, to imitate God, to walk in love, to walk as children of the light, to be discerning, to walk as wise, make the best of your time, be filled with the spirit, sing to God, submit to one another. And man, when you get done with that list, you just feel like you need a nap. <laughs> right. I mean, I think that this is the, the way that the majority of people who call themselves followers of Jesus or Christians or, or however they classify that. I think this right here, this list is how that we look at our Christianity, at, at, at our faith. At our, it, we understand it through, uh, I can't do this and I'm supposed to do that. And I can't do this and I'm supposed to do that. And that's exhausting. Like that, that's, that's completely frustrating and completely exhausting to, to, to try to just do a do and don't list. But what I think that, 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 that we're trying to get out of this and what I think Paul's trying to say to the church in Ephesus here is, listen to me, I want you to live a therefore life that changes everything. When you say I'm supposed to be kind to everyone because the, before the therefore, it reminded me how kind God has been to me. Right. I'm supposed to walk in this way or do these things or not do things because of what God has done. That becomes relationship. That's the difference between a religion where you have a whole bunch of lists like we looked at here. Do this and don't do that. Do this and don't do that. That's religion. Relationship is when we understand what God has done for us. This is now our response. Right. My wife is is amazing my wife I, I love that woman we've been married 23 years and and she's phenomenal and every once in a while she'll do something for me and it just it requires a response you, you know what i'm talking about you gotta you know maybe you're not married maybe you got a friend if you're single but somebody will do something or give you something and you just have this feeling like i i i, I have to respond like i have to reciprocate or i have to I have to do something you know like a lot of times what we'll do is, is we'll write thank you notes to people you know, somebody gives you a birthday gift. And so you write them a thank you note. It's just, I, I mean, I feel like I've got to do something. That's relationship. And that's what it means for us to have a therefore life is we can look at a list like this and make it religion. We can make it do this, don't do that. Do that, that and that's, that's just plain exhausting. I mean, there's nothing joyous about that. There's nothing fun about that whatsoever. It's just our sinful nature does not want to be told what to do. But the difference is, is that Jesus is not inviting us into a religion. God does not want us to step into a bunch of guidelines and, and, and a bunch of laws. What he wants us to do is to step into a relationship. Well, the only way for us to step into a relationship is to remember everything that came before the therefore. Who God is, how much he loves us, his, his passion for us. But God, even though I was a sinner and I bring nothing, I got nothing. Like there's, there's nothing I've got to bring to the party that, to make God love me. There's nothing I can do to make him love me. He just chooses to love me, not because he, 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 he he's wants to love, but because he is love. Like that's who God is. And so when we get to a place where we understand relationship, everything that was before and over and all, he keeps saying to us, therefore, Therefore, and what's he, re he's trying to get us to respond in, in what we do and how we live our lives. And it says here to do that very strictly, diligently. And so what does that mean? That means every day I've got to get up and renew my mind to who God is, to, to how great he is, to how much he loves me and that what he has done for my life. And when I do that, therefore, I will live this way. It's a joy to write a note to someone who's given you a gift. Like, like if you just think, ah, I should write somebody a note and you keep putting it off and you keep putting it off. It's just kind of one of those things on your to-do list. It's like, oh, I probably should do that, but I don't feel like doing that. Right. But the difference is, is when somebody gives you something amazing, you're like, I, I got to write them a note. I have to respond. That's what it means to live life to the full, to understand what it means to say, this is who Jesus is. This is what he's done for me. This is how amazing God is. Therefore, 
Therefore, I will limit what I do when it comes to my sexuality because of his great love for me. Therefore, I will not covet. I will, I will do these things, not because it's religion, but because it's relationship. It's my response. It is that therefore life. So he goes on and he's going to get a little more specific in ways that we can respond to his great love for us, right? Verse 22, wives, here we go. Be subject to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body and himself his savior. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be subject to everything in their husbands. I don't want to be subject to my husband. I don't, he's a goober and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Or I have to clean up or I have to fix it, right? I mean, that, this is immediately where our sinful nature goes. Listen to me, time, who is God? Is he a good father? Has he set all things in place? Is he sovereign? Is he in control of all things? Therefore, if I have that relationship and understanding of who he is, then I'll respond in relationship because of who God is, not necessarily because of who my husband is. This is something God has asked me to do, not something that my husband asked me to do, right? It's, it's about my relationship with him. And if I struggle with that, it's because I struggle with my relationship with the heavenly father and the understanding of how good he is and how his ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher. His ways of doing things are always better, but I've got to renew my mind to before the therefore, right? A therefore life responds to who God is. Now, Wives, before you get too bit out of shape about two verses, uh, the husbands get a whole bunch of verses here. All right, so he's going to come at the husbands here. Let's see what he says. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That is complete and total sacrifice. What is the call of a husband? To daily exhaust himself, giving everything that his family needs. That's, that's the call. So... Before, ladies, you start complaining too much about a submission thing, this is, this is the call. Now, as a man, we can be like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to come home and do this and do that and all this. I don't want to sacrifice. Listen, listen, then our struggle is not with our wife. Our struggle is with our relationship with God. Because remember, these are things that are responses to a relationship with God. And when I understand his love for me, his compassion for me, what his, that he has our best interest, then my response to that relationship looks like sacrificial living for my family that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she may be holy and without blemish our job men is to trust and love our heavenly father so much and understand his amazing 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 passion for you so much that my response is to turn around and do that same for my wife and my family, that same sacrificial living, that same, I go to the cross, I die to self and to, and to do what it is that brings life to my wife and to my family, that she might be holy. This says holy and without blemish. Even so husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no man hated his own flesh. Why does it say that? Because it says when the husband and wife come together, they become one, right? She, she is your own flesh. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it as Christ does the church. Because we are members, excuse me, we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is a profound one, and I'm saying that as it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Now, let me end with just a little simple relational teaching. So when we start talking about relationships between men and women, and especially between husband and wives... One of the things that we talk about over and over again that I counsel with and help people understand is, is what is said here in this very last verse. It's called the love and respect cycle. What is the basic need of every woman, of every girl? It is what it says here. Husbands, love your wives. It is love, security. Really what she wants is that big strong arm, initially of dad, 
right, of her dad to say, I got you, I love you, you're secure, I've, I've got you here. And that's really what she needs from each one of us. And so over and over again, as, as we've grown in our marriage, I have learned to look at Jen and when she's upset or things are out of whack, my question is, how is she feeling insecure or unloved? What doesn't feel secure to her? And the response in that is the way that I love her and the way that I'm told to love her. And if I will take care of her love and security, which is really why there's a lot of fights about finances, right? Or the house, because, you know, a lot of women like to, that's their nest, right? That kind of a thing. These, these are all security things, okay? And understanding that is the basic need. Now it goes on and it doesn't say, it doesn't say wives love your husbands, because guess what? Men are not interested in love and security. That is not our basic need. What does it say? It says, let the wife see that she respects her husband. The basic need of a man is respect. You can see that over and over again because when guys get together, man, there's, there's just kind of this bro code thing that like you, we dog on each other, but there's certain thing that it's over the line. Like you try to embarrass somebody else or disrespect somebody else, like it's, it's on kind of thing. And so what we've got to understand in our relationships was we're building. So for those of you young people, that if you are dating or courting or starting to work towards the concept of marriage, you need to understand the basic needs of how this whole thing works. Um, and that, that the man needs respect. And so when you come at him like a chihuahua, I'm going to let that sit for a second. Um, he feels disrespected. He's going to walk away. And when he walks away, you're going to feel insecure and unloved. And the cycle is going to go into the wrong direction. And so what, what Paul does that is so amazing in this, and this is, the, this is now taking what we started out with, with theological concepts, with the concept of, of, of God's atonement for us, his sacrifice for us, even though we were sinners and brought nothing to the party. This is the theology. This is the big stuff. Now he's going to put it into these practical. Here's, here's how I want you to live it out because of who God is, because of the relationship you have with me. Therefore, here's what I want you to do. There's not a person listening to this or really on the planet right now that if you don't seek, that if you seek truth, that you're not going to run into something that your flesh goes, I don't like that. Like there, there, as, as you come, and I've said it numerous times, I really don't like when I read that it says, you know, if somebody uh, smacks you in the face, then offer them the other cheek. That is not something that Mike Matheny goes, oh, that's such a good idea. I love it. That, no, that is not, right? I mean, that is not my response. But the reality being is that God is trying to help us to understand the way that he thinks, the way that he is, what love looks like. And we're trying to be imitators. But the reason that we're trying to be imitators is because of the relationship. And so I just want to encourage you today. Some of you may have struggled for years with your walk with God. Because really what you've been trying to do is do enough that he might be happy with you. Is, is, is you really are trying to please a dad, you never, an earthly dad that you never pleased or earthly parents that you never pleased. And so you, 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 you try to make things look perfect and you're trying to do, and it's, it's a do's and don'ts list. And what I want you to understand is when we say that it's a relationship with God, not a religion, it's just that, but the relationship Gets, it, it grows deep inside of you when you develop everything before the therefore, right? Uh, going, going back up real quick to, to that verse that I said we'd look at, verse 15. Look carefully then how you walk. Look diligently, accurately, precisely how you walk. Why am I doing what I do day to day? Am I just trying to please an angry God? Have, am I some, one somebody that goes, you know, what, I don't even know about that. So I don't even care. I just do my own thing anyway. And, and, and what I want so badly for you to understand and hear this morning, there is a loving, amazing God who simply because of his passion and compassion for us offers you life, offers you the opportunity to have contentment, fulfillment, to feel comfortable in your own skin. You know, when you get around somebody that is just comfortable in their own skin, it is so much more relaxing 
than people that are trying to impress or try to do. And so many of us are living in such that way. And it's because we don't constantly renew our mind to everything before the therefore. Who my God is. How much he loves me. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. This is why we've got to go back to his word every day. We've got to feed our mind with the understanding of what truth is. And if we will do that, our therefore life, everything we live out on the backside of that will be a joyful response to who he is and not just a task or something that we're supposed to do. And so I want to encourage you today. And if you don't have a regular reading program, if you're not regularly renewing your mind in some specific way, you got to do that because you can't live out the relationship if you don't know who you're in relationship with. And, and there may be somebody today that you go, you know, I've, I've never had a relationship with God. And what's amazing is God is so cool because his word says, if you'll just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, then he will save you. And you begin that relationship with him. So let me pray for all of us today. I'll pray for those of you who maybe um, need to make that decision today to make Jesus Lord of your life. And if that's you today, can I ask you to do something? As we pray that or after we pray that, there's a little button here that, that you can hit to raise your hand that, that today you committed your life to Jesus. We would love to know that, pray with you, or maybe even hit live prayer and pray with someone specifically. Uh, but let us know that uh, so that we can help you develop the relationship. It's not just about one prayer. It's about a relationship. And for the rest of us, that the Holy Spirit would give us new revelation of everything before the therefore, of who God is, how great he is, how amazing, so that I can respond in relationship to my amazing Heavenly Father. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. And I pray first for those that that need to make a decision for you today to, to, to make that decision to make you Lord of their life. And so God, would you meet them right where they are, in their living room, their car, wherever they happen to be today. Meet them in that moment, let them know how real you are and instill your Holy Spirit in them as they pray and ask you to be Lord of their life. If that's you today, maybe you'd pray something like this. Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Thank you for loving me right where I am. I invite you into my life. I ask you to become Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving my, my sins and making me new today. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Have a great week. Yes.
our anthem song and Jesus we love you and oh how we love you you are the one and I our hearts adore say it again Jesus we love you Say, oh, how we love. Oh, how we love. And you are the one. I hearts the door. I hearts the door. I God, we just thank you so much in this moment for your unfailing love. That God, even in times of uncertainty, that you still love us regardless. And God, we just thank you so much that God, that you chose us to show love to your people. So God, we just ask that you continue to just guide us 
continue to protect us, continue to show us what love is, that we may show the world in return your love. So God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.